I am calling from the Purdue Agricultural uh, Air Quality Laboratory in the Agricultural and Biological Engineering Department at Purdue University campus in West Lafayette, Indiana, where I have directed livestock odor research since 1993. Before we discuss the exhibit, the exhibit that uh, we developed, let's talk about odor. Odor is defined as the perception of volatilized chemicals by uh, an olfactory nerve in our nose. The perceptions can be pleasant or unpleasant. A pleasant perception is called a scent or aroma in the United States, and the word odor is mostly used for unpleasant perceptions, whereas in the UK, for example, the word odor covers both pleasant and unpleasant. The sensation and perception by the 350 receptors uh, in our nose depends on the concentrations of the odorants. Now, an odorant is, is usually a, an organic chemical, but it can also be an inorganic chemical like hydrogen sulfide uh, or ammonia. One, one proposed um, set of classes for odors is shown here, musky, putrid, pungent, camphoraceous, ethereal, floral, and pepperminty. Now, the livestock odor research, as I said, has been uh, conducted since 1993. We have, over the years, adopted sensory and analytical methods for evaluating odor. Sensory methods include laboratory and field olfact uh, olfactometric evaluations. The uh, unit at the bot bottom right uh, shows a laboratory olfactometer, and uh, just above that is a field olfactometer. We also use GC mass specs uh, and other analyzers to directly measure ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, and volatile organic compounds. So can we introduce an exhibit that will be fun and educational for livestock odor research. Well, unpleasant nuisance odors are what we are addressing, and the main sources of that are animal, is animal manure, and or mortalities as well. And so there's a lot of negative connotations with that type of odor, and in fact, it has been the subject of numerous lawsuits uh, over the uh, recent decades uh, around the country. So bringing livestock odor via manure to a fair or open house uh, will not it just won't mix very well. The health and safety officials will come to the exhibit with their concerns. And in fact, it could be an odor nuisance in itself for the open house. And I believe that with most of the people that would come to a, an open house for the university, for example, would rel have relatively low interest in uh, such a topic. And also, if we would say, let's take an odorant like hydrogen sulfide and bring that to the exhibit and, and do something with that, but, but hydrogen sulfide at high concentrations, uh, way above what would be normally considered just odorous, would, would, um, would create concern. And so a lot of effort would have to be expended to assure exhibit safety. Now, the annual Purdue Spring Fest is held every year, and our department is, has been involved uh, with various exhibits. And I desired for the livestock odor research to be represented. So what could we do to be involved? Well, this odor exhibit that we have been doing now since 1998 has been just a real popular hit uh, with both adults and kids. It's turned out to be challenging, educational, fun, and uh, very unique, as you can see. The children and adults, the parents are uh, busy looking, uh, smelling the, whatever is inside those vials. And you can see the vials are grouped into about three different categories. There's a sign there in front of the exhibit that says, how well can you smell? Come test your nose now. Or come test your nose here. And so the staff members of my group uh, would spend a couple hours uh, on a Saturday or a Sunday uh, to administer this table and just have a lot of fun interacting. The table was always busy, and it continues to be each and every year. 
And what we did was we ordered essential oils, pleasant smelling for the most part, uh, from a company out of California. And initially, for the first few years, we used the set on the left. So the easy group included grapefruit, lemon, and sweet orange. The medium group included lime, cedarwood, and bitter almond. And the hard group, labdamum, myrrh, and white pine. Notice that garlic was in the easy group. One year, the garlic filled the tent with a negative smell. So we, we uh, eliminated that from the next, um, the more recent set that we, when we had to reorder. And now it includes uh, grapefruit, uh, cinnamon, lavender, palmarosa, and tea tree smells. And as you can see on the right, the, the bios are just five milliliters. Uh, they're very easy to open up. They have a cotton ball, with, and we just place one drop of essential oil out of the bio that we get onto the cotton ball, and that is sufficient. This is the response sheet that each uh, participant gets. And they have the, the name of the odor, but they need to match the number on the vial to uh, the, the name on the sheet. As you can see, we uh, got 82% correct responses from the easy group, 62% from the median group, and 36% from the more difficult group. Now, we're, we're going to continue doing this, and here are some ideas that we thought of to, for future exhibits. Uh, we can give prizes for high performance on, on the test. Uh, we could include a poster or a display about the livestock or the research that we're doing so that if there are interested parties that uh, come through the tent, why we, we can encourage uh, that discussion and to educate those who might just read that uh, passing by. We could also demonstrate mitigation methods. We could easily show using the essential oil smells uh, the effect of distance from the source. We could demonstrate covering the odor and air treatment, myofiltration, absorption, scrubbing, and perhaps we could even introduce some a masking of the odor. And that concludes my presentation of, of, of our exhibit, which really surprised us in how popular it, it would become uh, during the Springfest uh, event.